Christmas is all about? friends welcome to day 10 of vlogmas i'm not sure if you can hear the shower in the background but if you can i'll try to mute it as best as i can today is like four days until christmas and i just got all of my christmas shopping done today actually three days i think three days till christmas but with the christmas shopping comes the much needed christmas wrapping so i'm currently wrapping presents for all of my family members tonight my dad and siblings and i went to um, shop for my mom so we got all of my mom's gifts and yesterday i went and shopped at beaufort with my friend gentry for all of my family so as of now i officially have all of my holiday purchases completely purchased so i thought why not sit back relax and chat while i wrap christmas presents now i'm gonna try to do this the best i can without showing the presents because this video goes up before christmas and i don't want all of my family members to know what i got them or what they are getting so i'll try to do this as discreetly as possible but i figured we would just chat it up so the first thing i'm gonna do is put all of the gifts in boxes so then i can wrap and no one will know what i'm wrapping while i'm videoing so let me let me get a sec to do that Okay, Ugh. I accidentally sent, spilled water on my floor, so there's a wet spot that I don't want to sit in. But look at this outfit, it's so cute. Ugg boots, obviously. White crew socks, Lululemon leggings, Target turtleneck, and this is from Amazon. I actually just puffed vest. I got it last year. Forgot I had it until I just got home and discovered it again. The key to decorating for Christmas, I mean cleaning for Christmas, I mean, what? Wrapping for Christmas is to clean as you go. Okay, so every year my family wraps presents. We always, or we've always done this. The kids have always wanted to help mop, wrap, like help wrap presents for my mom. And so she would always like just put stuff in boxes and label it, who it's to, who it's from. And then we could go in with a wrap and like we would basically do the job for her. But she, it would still be like a surprise when we opened it. I finally got my dad to tell me what he wanted for Christmas. We went to Academy while we were in Gainesville and he picked out a pair of boots. So I finally got to get my dad what he wanted for Christmas, which is just so much better. I teeter between wanting to surprise someone and wanting it to be like really thoughtful. I teeter that with just being like, hey, just tell me what you want. Cause I really just want to get you what you want. It is a thought that counts when it comes to the gift, of course, a hundred percent. But there's nothing better than getting a gift that you actually like, you know? Like my favorite is when someone like will send me, which is why I do it. Every year I make a very detailed Christmas list with the links to things, my size, the color of the item that I would want. It's very, very detailed. And then I just send it to everyone who may or may not be buying gifts for me. So then it's still a surprise as to what I get off of that list. I don't know what's being bought and what's not, but everything on there I like. So if you will buy off that list, there's no way I'm not gonna like the gift they give me. And I just feel like that's genius and more people should do that. It's kind of just like the same as a child's Christmas list that you ask them to write. And like children's Christmas lists are so cute. So why did we stop doing Christmas lists? Someone tell me, why did we stop that? Jack Frost nipping at your nose So I'm offering a sample phrase Although it's been said many times, many ways Merry Christmas Tomorrow at 1 o'clock I have a hair appointment. Finally, also my camera's crooked, but just leave it be because I don't have time right now. Finally, literally have not had my hair done by a professional since I left in June, which doesn't seem like a long time for the girlies that, you know, don't necessarily get their hair done a lot, but I grew up being a platinum blonde, which means that I was at the hair salon once every six weeks. 
And I am the sister of a hairstylist. Therefore, sometimes I'd even go every five or six weeks. And when I had extensions and platinum blonde hair, sometimes I would just go for fun every four weeks. So to say that I have gone with this hair for six months without seeing a stylist is actually a record for me. That's a big deal. And I'm so freaking excited because no matter how much skill you have to do your own hair, because honestly, my sister has taught me pretty well. Your hair never looks as good as when your stylist does it, you know? And Crystal kills it. If you need a new hairstylist and you live in Georgia and you live close to the Gainesville area, you absolutely need to go see my sister at Princeton Salon. I've referred so many of my friends there, so many of my coworkers there, and everyone that I've referred to her is like, your sister is a badass. And I'm like, I know. I mean, you just can't go wrong. If you need your hair done, you need to go see her. So I'm offering Okay, I know this conversation is kind of all over the place, but I've been like time lapsing between each present that I wrap so that you're not just like listening to me talk for 35 minutes again. But I feel like I should update you guys on my plans for when I get back to California because I'm in the middle right now of trying to get out of my lease and find a new place to live. So that is been interesting. Honestly, I know a lot of people, I have a lot of friends who are either graduating college or got graduating high school. My biggest tip for all of you is to sign less of a lease than you think you're going to need, especially if you're like me and you cannot tour a place in person or you can't find really another option because let's just say you get there and you sign a year lease like I did. This is my situation. And then you get there and you realize that there are hundreds of better options for less money. Or you get there and you find friends and you decide you no longer want to live alone and you know having a roommate would save you money and blah 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 and so on and so forth. But then you're stuck in this year long lease that really you don't need and save yourself some space to like meet friends because you will. Now they may not be your forever friends or your forever roommates, but you know, anything to be financially conscious of like while you're young and like want to be able to travel more and be able to like do more. I always think is better than spending more on where you live and not being able to do as much. And so that is my TED talk for you all today. Hope that you feel so much more smarter now because of me and prepared. <laughs> No, okay, but also this is a random thought. Remember how when we were kids, I, was, I saw a TikTok about this today and I wanted to talk about it. Remember when we were kids, and this is not an original thought. Let me just make, make sure I'm clear on that. This is not an original thought. I saw this on TikTok, but I just want to discuss it, okay? Remember when we were children and it was embarrassing. Like it was like a secret if you were wearing a knockoff. Like if you didn't have the real Uggs and you had knockoff Uggs, game's over. Don't tell anyone, you want no one to know, right? But nowadays, literally people become TikTok famous and make money off of finding dupes for other people. And I'm like, okay. And so when I saw that girl's TikTok, I was like, she's so right. Like I will never ever forget having, when I was in middle school, I had the knockoff LL Bean duck boots because the duck boots were like all the rage or maybe it was even high school and I couldn't afford to buy the real ones because they were a ridiculous amount of money. And so I had the knockoffs and guys, I got the knockoffs for Christmas, okay? I was so embarrassed to wear them. Like, and for what? They served the same purpose. And honestly, they were actually way more comfortable because ended up a year later, 20 million days behind the trend, I was able to actually buy LL Bean boots, like the real duck boots. And I got them and I was like, this is them? Like, they're so uncomfortable. And they made your feet frigid. So I think that when I saw that TikTok today, it kind of restored my um, faith in humanity again. I was like, you know what? We may be going backwards in some areas of the world, 100%, right? Like, we're not perfect. There's lots of things like are really bad right now. I mean, we kind of feel really sad about this world. But the fact that a little seventh grade girl can walk into her school with a dupe of the Bottega bag or a dupe 
of an Abercrombie and Fitch shirt or a dupe of a Lululemon Align tank and not feel ashamed and be proud of that dupe and tell all of her, her little friends, look at my little Lulu dupe, like it was only $24 instead of $68. Like the fact that we can do that in peace just makes me proud of us. We're saving little girls everywhere. I'm just saying, because we all know that middle school and high school, it's all about the show. Even some adults, like it's all about the show for them. Sometimes I catch myself like wanting things. I'm like, do I even really want that? Or do I just want it because it like would be cool that I would have it. And those are some really reflective moments. Oh, something else we need to talk about is Alex Earl and her boyfriend breaking up. That, not them breaking up, but her response to it. Like the fact that like most girls, when they break up with their ex, they're like crying for days and she just like got on a private plane and was drinking champagne. I was like, okay. She really just is the blueprint, I guess. As she should be. The TikToks are addicting. And the, the, the transfers from TikTok to Instagram, I'm like, this girl, give it a year. Give it a year and she's gonna be way far, way, way, way far than anyone could have ever imagined when she first started on TikTok. your family does Christmas. Like, are you a get dressed up, full makeup on, Christmas outfit kind of girly? Like, is that your your vibe, your family's vibe? Or are you the no makeup on, first thing out of bed, but my mom's still making us take pictures, please help, opening presents, chilled out, breakfast at home kind of Christmas girly? Because my family is very much the second one. I, my light just died. I love that I can just do nothing on Christmas and enjoy my presents. But I think this is where we're gonna end Vlogmas number 10 because at this point I'm just rambling. And because at this point it's already 11 o'clock at night and I still need to wrap a few gifts and get in the shower and get ready for my hair appointment tomorrow. So with that being said, I love you guys so much. Thanks for tuning in to another Vlogmas. I love you. And sorry that the conversations were all over the place. I was just, you know, thinking aloud as I was wrapping presents. So at least like you guys were wrapping presents with me and not just me sitting here alone talking to myself. I have friends to talk to. Love you. See you tomorrow. Many times, many ways.